Earlier today, I sat down with Major General in the Reserves, Yoav Gallant. After decades spent in senior positions in the Israeli military, he's now a member of the 10-person Security Cabinet and Minister of Construction and Housing. He weighed in on everything from his initiative to get Iran out of Syria to the opportunity he sees with President Donald Trump. Yoav Gallant, thanks very much for joining us here in our studios. My pleasure. Thank you. So I want to start with defense. We always hear a lot about the threats from north to south uh, here in Israel. Just today, a stabbing in Jerusalem. With your decades of experience in the military and now in politics, what keeps you up at night? What are you most concerned about? I think that the uh, real threat is uh, rising in the east and the north side of Israel. Uh, the Iranian uh, effort in order to create a territorial corridor from uh, the Gulf to the Mediterranean, a thousand uh, miles apart from uh, Tehran to Beirut, is, uh, is a very frightening one. And uh, right now, you know, Iran is controlling four capitals, Tehran, Baghdad, Beirut, and also Sana'a, and they are fighting over the fifth one under the Russian umbrella, Damascus. And uh, for Israel, it uh, symbolized a very uh, solid threat. We have to deal with it. So we just heard Netanyahu on the same subject last week in Moscow, meeting with Vladimir Putin, warning about Russia, warning, about, uh, warning Russia about Iran's stronghold in Syria. As the only one with your level of military experience in the security cabinet, what do you think Israel should do? I, I, I believe that uh, at the same time that we have this... Uh, a very sensitive point. We have a, a real uh, opportunity because of the uh, victory of the new president in the United States of America. Uh, no one wants the Iranian in this part of the world. Most of the Sunni states, Saudi, uh, Egypt, Jordan, Turkey, wants them to go back to Iran. Uh, it won't be a good idea for the European as well, because if uh, 2 million Alawis and Shis will control 20 million Sunnis, they will be push them towards Europe. The European do not like this idea. Therefore, I believe that if we join forces and make some progress in uh, the rehabilitation of uh, Syria, by uh, an American-led force together with the Saudis and others that will bring the money in order to help the Russians who are there to settle the situation with the Sunni side, uh, Israel will fulfill its demands as well, including pushing the Iranians away and having the Golan Heights. Let's hear Netanyahu for a moment uh, in that conversation with Vladimir Putin last week in Moscow. I made it clear in relation to Syria, Israel has no objection to a deal, but we firmly oppose the possibility of such an arrangement where Iran and its proxies will remain a military presence in Syria. I think that these things are clarified in the best way. In my experience with President Putin, these things are more important not only in preventing misunderstandings, but ultimately they are also reflected in the area. So you're talking about sort of cutting Iran out of the equation in a way and that other countries don't want to see Iran here. But Russia is a very big ally of Iran. Do you think that Netanyahu, together with Trump, can really get Iran out of this region? My initiative that was presented to Netanyahu and later on to President Putin and President Trump is uh, saying basically that the need for the Iranians and Hezbollah by the Russians as boots on the ground is temporary, because after they will win this battle, at least on the western side of, of uh, Syria, they won't need the Iranians to be there. Actually, they are an obstacle, because the Iranians are rejected by most of the population in Syria. And if you want to have any kind of relationship with 20 million Sunni people, you need to push the Iranians. So it will be a Russian interest as well. Did you get a response from the American administration yet on that initiative? I, I think that we are on the way. But of course, these are a very, I would say, very uh, long-term uh, 
sequences. Let's uh, quickly move to another border, uh, to the Gaza border, to Hamas. We saw just a couple of weeks ago a scathing report come out from the state controller uh, that the Israeli security cabinet mishandled itself, that it was unprepared and misinformed for that war. Uh, what's your reaction to that report, and has anything actually been done to fix what was made then, those mistakes? I think there were mistakes, and I believe that the IDF and the uh, the, the defense the ministry and others, including the cabinet, are fixing what is needed to be to be fixed. Uh, basically, like the, what, for example? For for example, uh, creating an obstacle that will be uh, almost next to impossible to uh, cross on the uh, Israeli Gazan uh, uh, border, especially against tunnels. We have to understand that the pressure in Gaza is very high. Meaning that one in one hand, the population have almost nothing in, in terms of economy. On the other hand, they are activating and moving toward a military struggle against Israel because those who are uh, digging tunnels do not want to use them in order to send flowers or candies. They want to do terror actions against Israeli soldiers and Israeli citizens, and we cannot allow that. Therefore, we are blocking this, this uh, border underneath the ground. And uh, in a way, this can change the equation in Gaza Street because they are losing part of their assets and they may be very sensitive to it. According to that report, though, that has been the case. The, the tunnel threat had been the case for a long time. And it, in many ways, holds Netanyahu himself responsible for not conveying information adequately and preparing for that tunnel threat. Opposition leader Isaac Herzog, after that report, even called for Netanyahu to resign over that report. Do you agree with him? I, I believe that uh, uh, the, the, the most important issue in uh, fighting terrorism is the military and the army. Because if the cabinet is behaving perfect and the military is not ready, the results are well known. If the military is doing its job and the cabinet is not doing its job, the result will be fine. Therefore, I believe that if we give the military, the defense minister, uh, the best people every year, as you know, by law, as soldiers, girls and boys, uh, we give them 70 to 75 billion dollar billion a shekel a year in order to prepare they have to do their job and i believe that uh, we will learn the lessons and we'll do it better so Phases. what did go wrong i i believe that uh, the the uh, defense ministers and the the uh, the army did not uh, take it seriously enough as a threat and therefore did not prepare themselves for this situation. You know, the tunnels were a known fact. People were photographed on the tunnels two or three years before this operation in Gaza. And uh, we knew that there are 30 different uh, uh, tunnels. So what about preparation? What about forces, technologies, R&D, equipment? Where is all that? All of it. So they underestimated the threat? I, I believe that uh, they, they didn't work urgently. They, meaning the military or the cabinet, or both? I, I, I think that 90% of it is the military and the defense minister. They have to decide what they do with what is given to them by the Israeli government. If we're looking then at today, because there's always a new situation to prepare for uh, here, we have Hamas seemingly getting closer to Egypt. We have a new hardline leader in Hamas. We have a new sort of charter that paints Hamas potentially as more moderate. Are you concerned by Egypt and Hamas getting closer? The, we are very lucky to have a, a reasonable and a true leader like uh, Abdel Fattah Sisi in, uh, in Egypt. In a way, is a combination between Nasser and Sadat. He's very charismatic, he's very smart, and he is a leader. And he has a, a real threat. And uh, the Western world, including Israel, do not want 100 million Egyptians to go into chaos. This will be a disaster for Europe and 
for the rest of the world. Therefore, we have to support Abdel Fattah Sisi, and I believe that the cooperation between Israel and Egypt is a very good one because we have a mutual enemy, which is the radical Islamic Sunni uh, Salafist war. So let's jump to cooperation of a different kind today. Uh, we're in the Trump era, obviously. Uh, we have U.S. Uh, envoy, Mideast envoy Jason Greenblatt, arriving to this region. What do you hope to see from this visit? First of all, uh, we welcome the initiative of uh, President Trump uh, to, to create, uh, once again, a direct uh, negotiation between uh, Israel and the Palestinians. And uh, we are 120 years from the first uh, Zionist Congress in Basel, 100 years from the Balfour Declaration, and 70 years from the UN resolution that decided that a two-state solution is the solution in November 47. And uh, it wasn't uh, agreed. It was rejected by the Arabs and by the Palestinians especially. And therefore, we are fighting, if they are willing to agree that uh, a Jewish state is uh, having the right uh, to be part of this region. And if they are agree about the first and most important issue, that there cannot be another military force, another army on the western side of the Jordan Valley. Would Israel be willing to hold back on settlements? Are they a problem? Why should I, uh, you know, give them uh, my, my final idea in order to start negotiation? Let's put it this way. Fifty years ago, there were no settlements in Judah and Samaria because it was Jordanian, Jordanian control. And uh, they uh, started a war in 67. What was the reason to start this war 50 years ago? What was it depend on different settlements that weren't there? So Israel have proven that we are ready to make painful concessions. As it Do happened, those concessions include as it happened with withdrawing Egypt, from settlements? Is Egypt, with Egypt, we have done it. We have done it with Jordan, in a way. And if something serious will be on the table, we can negotiate. But right now, the settlements are not the problem. What is the right way? Is a one-state solution an option that the Israeli government is looking at these days? Within uh, five years, there will be 7 million Jews and 7 million Palestinians on the western side of the Jordan Valley. Three out of three million out of them in Judah and Samaria, two million in Israel and two million in uh, Gaza Strip. Uh, I spent a real long part of my life fighting with uh, Palestinians in refugee camps in Gaza and in, in uh, Judah and Samaria. I don't want Israel to control those refugee camps, neither in Nablus or in Ramallah or in other places. Therefore, I believe that the Palestinians have to uh, define their own future by themselves. But there are certain conditions. For them, it will be a state. Therefore, they will have a flag and they will have uh, the, the right to send the ambassadors uh, through over the world. But they cannot control the aviation, they cannot control the, 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 the space, and of course, they cannot have military force. So for Israel, it's something that is very similar to an autonomy, but for the Palestinians, is a state. If these conditions can work together, then Israel is willing to go forward. So let's just uh, have a little personal note. You spent decades in the military. You've now had a, an adequate taste of politics. You have a lot of uh, opinions about where Israel uh, should be going on that sense. Where do you see yourself politically? Where, where's five years from now? Well, uh, I just uh, find myself in the politics uh, because I wasn't uh, satisfied uh, with the results that uh, the IDF was bringing in the, in the last operation in 2015 and uh, 2014. And uh, I think that uh, we can do better. And uh, I joined Kahlon together with Kulanu because I believe this is a, a, a true and important uh, issue for the future of Israel to deal with the, the weak levels in the 
uh, population and to help them. And uh, right now, um, he's, uh, you know, second in command in the Can chain. Can you imagine yourself being first in command, leading a political no, no, party I, here? Right now, in the I'm, right now, I'm happy with what I'm doing. But, you know, who knows what the future brings us. So it's an option. Everything is an option. All right, uh, a diplomatic answer. You have Galan. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. It's my pleasure.